Okay, just a quick update here. This is the next day after I hooked up the inverter. We've got pretty good sun today. Let's see, battery voltage. I don't know if you can see that here. It says 15.84 measured off my balance leads. And I've checked all the other three, three batteries that aren't hooked up to the meter and they're all about the same voltage. So the charging is working. We were up to, I think, 15.95 volts on the uh, bus bar there. Let's go up and take a look at the charge controller here. Yeah, so not sure if the meter shows up, but we're getting about 17 amps into the batteries and 14, 15 amps into my DC load. I guess this meter here reads a little bit high. One problem with this charge controller is it doesn't have a voltage sense line. But yeah, I'll give you an update if anything uh, happens here, but so far it's looking good. We got up pretty close to 16 volts at the power inverter input, and it didn't complain, it didn't beep or shut off or anything, so I think that's pretty promising. And if we go down to this meter here, the, this is the current going into my power inverter, 10.7 amps. We're doing 122 watts to run my home heating air blowers. So actually that's quite a drop. It used to be about 12.5 amps. It was about a tenth of the watts. So 122 watts was equal to about 12 and a half, 12.6 amps and now we're doing 122 watts with 10.6 amps. So that's cut two amps off of the current required to run the uh, power inverter at that same load. So that, I guess that's pretty good. So you get about a 20% voltage increase. So the voltage went up 20% and the current went down 20% and you end up with the same number of watts. Looks like we're charging the batteries up today. We are just hit 15.6. It's about uh, a little after 10 in the morning. Yeah, so one, one thing I've added to the uh, battery bus bars is I made up this little cover plate. It's a piece of uh, PVC angle that I had. Same material I used for the mounting brackets. That essentially covers the whole top of the positive bus bar except for where the the wire, the heavy cable connection comes in and then I painted that with a little bit of rubber coating so it's pretty much protected from anything shorting it out and you can't see it on camera but the two bars are separated by oh maybe a sixteenth of an inch something like that and on each bar on the facing surface I have some 12 mil thick UHMW tape. It's clear tape so that's why you can't see it and it sticks out just a little bit above and below the two bars so there's a total of 24 mils of plastic separating those two bars and then they're screwed into the bracket. Like I say this this is a temporary setup when I put it in the solar shed this bar like this is going to be turned so that the connectors are facing down or up. The way the shed's going to be built, the upper half of the shed's going to have all the electronics. Uh, it'll have these bus bars, the charge controllers, or the breakers, the ammeters, all the switches and everything. And then there'll be a shelf dividing the top half from the bottom half. The bus bars are going to be in the bottom half with the two long cables coming down around the shelf and down to the battery bus bar and then the batteries will be on slide out trays below the shelf and the way the batteries will go in they're actually going to be rotated 90 degrees as well so that instead of being lined up that way they'll be turned this way and you'll have the four groups of cells in one module this way then I can put a second group of four in front of it and then on the other side of the shelf I can have two more so that gives me four 4S batteries on one layer and I'm 
probably going to go with two layers high, so I'll be able to put eight modules on each tray. That way I kind of get a, a balance between how many trays I have to build versus how many batteries I can hold. So that way I can probably get up to like 32 of these 4S modules, which would give me 16 kilowatt hours. And that's how many battery connectors I would need. I would have one connector for each tray. Each tray would have, say, eight battery modules in it. And if I go to a 7S setup for 24 volts, instead of having four and four, I would just have seven. And I would have just two 7S batteries on one layer and then two on the top layer. So I'd just have four 7S batteries instead of eight 4S. So I'm trying to build the infrastructure to work either 4S or 7S, depending on which way I ultimately go. But the reason I wanted to do the 4S was this thing works on 16 volts. That thing works on 16 volts. This thing does 16 volts, and I thought, why not try 16 volts? That's something different. I haven't seen anybody do that. But let me show you some of the charging parameters. So I've done an earlier video on this, but uh, to change those, you come down here to control parameters. And so I've got my battery type as user, and right now I've got about 133 amp hours. And so this is one or two parameters I changed right here. Originally I'd set this up to 16.8 which is the 4.2 volts per cell but what I found was on days where you have the cloud edge effect you get the big billowing cumulus cloud that blocks the sun for five or ten minutes and then the cloud blows by and then you get a a blast of sun. Well I was having the charge controller overvolt the system and the power inverter shut off uh, two times. I had two times that the power inverter shut off so I've dropped it from 16.8 down to 16.4. That worked fine for about a week and then I had another overvoltage shut off on the inverter so I've dropped it to 16.3 and that seems to have uh, helped because I haven't had a shut off now through a couple of these partly cloudy days and everything stayed running I have the charge limit set to 16.1 which again is at the charge controller terminals down at the battery level I see about 15.9 15.95 something like that so that's there uh, overvolt reconnect is again at 16.1 the equalization is 16.1 the boost charge is 16.1 so I have everything at 16.1 and then my float is a tenth of a volt less than that and then the boost recovery or reconnect voltage is at 15.9 and then these are the undervolt. I haven't had to change any of these. And then I have the boost time at 180, which is the maximum amount of time. And that's all those parameters. I've had a couple of viewers ask how you set the time and date on one of these. And you have to go down to this number 6, device parameters. You hit the OK. So this is the ID is what shows up if you have multiple charge controllers and you're monitoring them say on a PC with their, their PV monitoring program. So this device shows up as 001 and if I had a second device I could change the device ID. So you can change that there and then if you go down there's the backlight. You can just switch down. You can change the backlight time and if you go forward Here's where you can actually change the date and time. You just click on the field you want and then up or down arrow, April, March. So number six is where you set the time and date and number four is where you set the charging parameters. So I just wanted to show you that. I haven't had any overvolt problems with the inverter since I've done the uh, changes. So I'll do another video where I look at using the trimetric 
with the 4S lithium batteries 